power punk pioneers bowling for soup from Dallas by way of Wichita Falls, Texas, fronted by co-founder Jarrett Ray Reddick. In 2022, he released his first country album called Just Woke Up. Here's the story of that record from the man himself. Stacking up the years and a few blessings, yes. I'll count you right up there with the best. Like a good song plays on and on. You're one of the good ones. You shoot straight. I learned really early that, you know, you can sort of get into different sides of, of this business. I mean, at one point I, I was managing bands, I was directing videos. And then musically, I've had side project after side project. My best friend and I have a metal band called Jurinus. My uh, best girlfriend and I have a band called Jarrett Kelly. I have two podcasts. I'm a voice actor, so I did stuff on Phineas and Ferb. I, I do the voice of Chuck E. Cheese. So I don't really feel like there's ever been any limit to like what I can do outside of what got me here, which is obviously Bowling for Soup. And I've got about 112 tattoos. But I'm way more country than you. I always wanted to make a country record. I didn't know in what capacity I wanted to do that. I did know that if Bowling for Soup did it, like if we did Bowling for Soup Goes Country, that it would instantly be a novelty, whether it's successful or not, like it would, we wouldn't be taken serious. And so uh, the pandemic hit. My buddy, Zach Malloy, um, who is from a band called The Nixons, who is a Nashville songwriter now, and Nixon's still doing very well. He and I had been talking about doing this country thing for a long time. And he said, uh, dude, this is it. This is the time. So the album's called Just Woke Up. The working title was actually uh, Jarrett Ray Reddick, he done gone and did it. It's been right there and I'm finally doing it. So I thought, you know, just woke up. And I literally took my phone and I took a picture of myself and that's the cover of the album. And that's me. So I got a photo credit on the album, which is nice. Now I'm a photographer. He was sort of like putting himself out there too. He's like, I really want to try to be, to produce this. If you'll trust me, if you'll, if you'll have me, I'd like to sort of just do this. And I was like, man, that sounds great because I'm tired of doing everything myself, you know? And George Strait's been singing 30 years about his exes. Everyone loves songs about Texas. We wrote this record over text message in three weeks. And the musicians went in in Nashville and recorded the, the album in one day. And then I went to Nashville and in two and a half days recorded the vocals and we were done and it was all so organic. It happened so, you know, just like all of the songs, just whether it's Zach's idea going, hey, what about this? And I send back again over text message. So, hey, I got this idea. Here's a little clip. And then I'd send it back. Hey, I added this and here's some more words. And it just, just came. And I've done a hundred song swaps with country musicians and didn't have one country original. I did it because they were fans of what I do. And they knew that I would fit in with the scheme of, uh, you know, what it was they were doing that night. And I, it's always been a blast. And so all of the, the country guys, um, you know, have been so kind to me. I hold you in the morning and a beer at the end of the day. Both of you on a Friday night while we're dancing our troubles away. A Cody Canada, first person I asked a friend but also just a one of my favorite humans it's been very cool how many times our lives have sort of intertwined i mean his kids are fans of my band now and you know we were <laughs> such huge fans of them and we were still in a van when cross Canadian was on a tour bus and when we'd play together they'd let us come in and get in the air conditioning and a long history there he's got to be on the mount rushmore of texas country to me i i, I just don't know how he's not i'm trying to Frank Turner is my favorite uh, living songwriter. The cool thing about that song that Frank uh, is on, which is called Drunk As It Takes, me and Zach wrote that about 13 or 14 years ago with Rodney Clawson, who has a bunch of number ones in Nashville, and nobody ever cut the song. Natalie, Natalie, why don't you 
don't you come back home to me. The story behind Natalie is this. I actually found out who my biological father is about five years ago when my older sisters found me. I all of a sudden had these older sisters and started to learn about who uh, my biological father was. He had passed away. Uh, and this man was a musician, he played multiple instruments. He was a radio DJ. He liked to whistle a Christmas song all the time, a different one. He whistled Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer all the time. And me, I have whistled Frosty the Snowman every single day since the eighth grade. Well, he was in a band uh, and he wrote and recorded a song called Natalie, 1959, when he was 19 years old. They sent it to me and I was like, I'm gonna cover this for my country band. I got Stephen Edgerton from The Descendants, my favorite band in the world, to play guitar on it. And his wife's name is Natalie. Now, here's the deal. I, this has actually been one of the most fun interviews I've done in a long time. Uh, I Thank you for coming into my house and driving all the way here or whatever. But I have a nine-year-old and it's summer and his Fortnite is on pause right now. Uh, so you guys are gonna have to get the hell out of here. It's like she's got the leash and I'm the doggone doggone.